Peace to those who want to see. This is the good professor coming at you. I just want to take a few minutes of your time to share with you something I ran into at KIK, get into the know. Love that site. Anyway, the name of the post is Drapetomia. The disease that caused Negroes to run away. Put on your thinking cap. Drapetomania was a supposed mental illness described by American physician Samuel A. Cartwright in 1851 that caused black slaves to flee captivity. Today, Drapetomania is considered an example of pseudoscience, and part of the edifice of scientific racism. The term derives from the Greek drapets, a runaway slave, plus mania, madness, frenzy. Now I will recite the speech that Cartwright, he is not worthy to be addressed as doctor, wrote in 1851, hold on, this is going to be a rough ride, drapetomania, or the disease causing Negroes to run away. It is unknown to our medical authorities, although its diagnostic symptom, the absconding from service, is well known to our planters and overseers. In noticing a disease not heretofore classed among the long list of maladies that man is subject to, it was necessary to have a new term to express it. The cause in the most of cases, that induces the Negro to run away from service, is as much a disease of the mind as any other species of mental alienation, and much more curable, as a general rule. With the advantages of proper medical advice, strictly followed, this troublesome practice that many Negroes have of running away, can be almost entirely prevented, although the slaves be located on the borders of a free state, within a stone's throw of the abolitionists, if the white man attempts to oppose the deity's will, by trying to make the Negro anything else than the submissive knee bender, which the Almighty declared he should be, by trying to raise him to a level with himself, or by parting himself on an equality with the Negro, or if he abuses the power which God has given him over his fellow man, by being cruel to him, or punishing him in anger, or by neglecting to protect him from the wanton abuses of his fellow servants and all others or by denying him the usual comforts and necessaries of life, the Negro will run away. But if he keeps him in the position that we learn from the scriptures he was intended to occupy, that is, the position of submission, and if his master or overseer be kind and gracious in his hearing towards him, without condescension, and at the same time ministers to his physical wants, and protects him from abuses, the Negro is spellbound and cannot run away, according to my experience, that genuflexit dash the awe and reverence, must be exacted from them, or they will despise their masters, become rude and ungovernable, and run away. On Mason and Dixon's line, two classes of persons were apt to lose their negroes, those who made themselves too familiar with them, treating them as equals, and making little or no distinction in regard to color, and, on the other hand, those who treated them cruelly, denied them the common necessaries of life, neglected to protect them against the abuses of others, or frightened them by a blustering manner of approach, when about to punish them for misdemeanors. Before the Negroes run away, unless they are frightened or panic-struck, they become sulky and dissatisfied, the cause of this sulkiness and dissatisfaction should be inquired into and removed or they are apt to run away or fall into the negro consumption. When sulky and dissatisfied without cause, the experience of those on the line and elsewhere, was decidedly in favor of whipping them out of it, as a preventive measure against absconding, or other bad conduct. It was called whipping the devil out of them, if treated kindly, well fed and clothed, with fuel enough to keep a small fire burning all night separated into families, each family having its own house not permitted to run about at night to visit their neighbors, to receive visits or use intoxicating liquors, and not overworked or exposed too much to the weather, they are very easily governed more so than any other people in the world. When all this is done, if any one of more of them, at any time, are inclined to raise their heads to a level with their master or overseer, Humanity and their own good require that they should be punished until they fall into that submissive state which it was intended for them to occupy in all after time, when their progenitor received the name of Canaan or submissive knee-bender.
they have only to be kept in that state and treated like children, with care, kindness, attention and humanity, to prevent and cure them from running away, dyspepsia ethopica, or hebetude of mind and obtuse sensibility of body, a disease peculiar to Negroes called by overseers, rascality, dysesthesia ethopica is a disease peculiar to Negroes, affecting both mind and body in a manner as well expressed by dysesthesia, the name I have given it, as could be by a single term. There is both mind and sensibility, but both seem to be difficult to reach by impressions from without. There is a partial insensibility of the skin, and so great a hebetude of the intellectual faculties, as to be like a person half asleep, that is with difficulty aroused and kept awake. It differs from every other species of mental disease, as it is accompanied with physical signs or lesions of the body discoverable to the medical observer, which are always present and sufficient to account for the symptoms. It is much more prevalent among free Negroes living in clusters by themselves, than among slaves on our plantations, and attacks only such slaves as live like free Negroes in regard to diet, drinks, exercise, etc. It is not my purpose to treat of the complaint as it prevails among free Negroes, nearly all of whom are more or less afflicted with it, that have not got some white person to direct them to take care of them. To narrate its symptoms and effects among them would be to write a history of the ruins and dilapidation of Haiti, and every spot of earth they have ever had uncontrolled possession over for any length of time. I propose only to describe its symptoms among slaves, from the careless movements of the individuals affected with the complaint, they are apt to do much mischief, which appears as if intentional, but is mostly owing to the stupidness of mind and insensibility of the nerves induced by the disease. Thus, they break, waste and destroy everything they handle, abuse horses and cattle, tear, burn or rend their own clothing, and, paying no attention to the rights of property, steal others, to replace what they have destroyed. They wander about at night, and keep in a half-nodding sleep during the day. They slight their work, cut up corn, cane, cotton or tobacco when hoeing it, as if for pure mischief. They raise disturbances with their overseers and fellow servants without cause or motive, and seem to be insensible to pain when subjected to punishment, the fact of the existence of such a complaint, making man like an automaton or senseless machine, having the above or similar symptoms, can be clearly established by the most direct and positive testimony. That it should have escaped the attention of the medical profession, can only be accounted for because its attention has not been sufficiently directed to the maladies of the Negro race. Otherwise a complaint of so common an occurrence on badly governed plantations, and so universal among free Negroes, or those who are not governed at all, a disease radicated in physical lesions and having its peculiar and well-marked symptoms and its curative indications, would not have escaped the notice of the profession. The northern physicians and people have noticed the symptoms, but not the disease from which they spring. They ignorantly attribute the symptoms to the debasing influence of slavery on the mind without considering, that those who have never been in slavery, or their fathers before them, are the most afflicted, and the latest from the slave-holding south the least. The disease is the natural offspring of Negro liberty the liberty to be idle, to wallow in filth, and to indulge in improper food and drinks, there you have it. Drapetomania, hopefully one day, it will become contagious among us. Peace.